now comrades uh, and friends this uh, panjami land question uh, is a very complex issue uh, that is a specific situation in tamil nadu uh, because uh, the british government during the late 90s 19th century sorry not 19th century that is in 1891 the then uh, chengalpet collector uh, he made a detailed study of the situation of the dalits their living conditions and made a report to the british government based on which in 1892 the colonial powers passed an act interesting almost 12 lakh acres of land exclusively to the panjama that means the those who are outside the varna system panjama means those who are not in the varna system means according to manismriti they are subhuman they are not even equal to humans so they are because they have no land they cannot own any land they are working in the agricultural sector like bond like, like slaves you know right and uh, so uh, seeing the this uh, most inhuman situation we know that caste system is the most inhuman institution in the world so who are the uh, oppressors who are the real uh, uh, sovereigns of this uh, caste system the british colonies out of their sympathy they decided to uh, make this uh, decision and they, by it was legally by act it was uh, decided that 12 12 lakh acres of land uh, will be used for or will be available to the dalits the panchama and this land cannot be used by any other sections only the scheduled castes only the dalits can use that land that was the understanding and uh, for almost uh, half a century that means until 1947 this was the situation the 12 lakh acres of land were totally owned by the dalits as decided by the british government the colonies but after power transfer that is after the britishers uh, formally left india and the power is entrusted with the indian ruling classes the whole situation changed fundamentally as dr ambakar rightly said that uh, social tyranny is a thousand fold more serious than political tyranny what has happened is after the power transfer all these lands were assert were taken over by vested interests bureaucrats political parties and other castes also many castes intermediate castes and many uh, even actually it is illegal but they formed they formed and even this bureaucrats they helped to uh, create artificial documents illegal documents are they made it in a, it is a uh, and even uh, many many uh, this melas what is called many many special schemes were arranged by bureaucrats and to the by the tacit understanding of the uh, government run by these political parties to transfer this land from the panjamas to the other people such efforts were also there and when the green revolution advanced the because of the exigencies and the needs of the green revolution this land were assert by still more sections and the dalits they were compelled to migrate to cities as slum dwellers uh, or to other parts of india to bangalore and to other areas these people were compelled to migrate while the whole land told like a case were totally taken over by the new ruling section that emerged or that developed in the post power transfer situation now the thing is that today we must understand that the the mainstream parties the mainstream ruling class parties are not interested in this thing 
and they never say anything about this. But the uh, other sections, many left movements, some ML movements are also involved in many struggles, even in Jews. Even women's movements are also involved uh, in this question. Dalit movements also. Dalit movements also. And many Dalit movements also came forward raising this question. But these were not taken in an organized form. A state question, a center, a political question of Tamil Nadu in that way it was never been raised. In 1994, John Thomas, one and uh, then uh, Erimari. Erimari, one uh, two youths who fought for this land, they were they become martyrs. The police fired at them and they become martyrs. In spite of this brutal massacre, in spite of this martyrdom of these two youths, still this question was not taken to the mainstream. So it is still there. Even when we are in the 21st century, two decades are finished. We are over. Two decades are over in the 21st century. Now no mainstream parties are taking up this, this question. And even, even the so-called left is also not taking up this question. So we have to link this question with the question of caste also. What is the situation today? So caste is an intractable, untraceable one. Whereby caste oppression is bouncing back with intensified beaver in post uh, power transfer situation. So as Dr. Ambakar has rightly said, as long as caste system is there, there is no democracy. And now caste system is advancing, even not only in the ordinary situation, there are in other fields, in higher institutions of learning. Everywhere caste is now safely seated uh, in the corridors of power. And we know everything connected with that. And it is connected with this, that the marginalization, and uh, the uh, these uh, Dalits or these uh, most untouchable sections are now driven to the peripheries of society. It is a manifestation of this that this land question is also now not in the main agenda. So it is interconnected. Therefore, we must take up this question in the proper perspective. As far as CBI and Red Star is concerned, our party is now taking this uh, caste annihilation as one of a strategic question of Indian Democratic Revolution. Because this caste and class are intertwined. In India, caste and class are inseparable. They are integral. And any class analysis in India, without taking the caste question, will lead to erroneous conclusions. That is what happened to the communist movement in India. The communist movement from the very beginning, of course, in the 30s, the draft Platform for Action, a document prepared by the CPI, which was underground at that time. Abolition of caste was clearly mentioned there. But after the 30s, when the Brahminical uh, leadership came to the forefront, and uh, even Dr. Ambakar had to uh, move away from them, and even Ambakar called them Brahmin boys, because of their approach to caste question. And therefore, they considered caste as a superstructural question. Nothing to do with the base. But we know that caste is integral with the base also. It cuts across base and superstructure. And that is why the land question is also there is how they are not, not empowered to hold land. This is as I can give you a parallel situation in Kerala. In 1957, when the most uh, trumpeted, which is one of the most progressive land reforms in India, brought out by the EMS ministry. In 1957, in that uh, they, they never accepted, they never considered the Dalits are as the real owners of the land. They never put forward the slogan, land to the tiller. Even though in theory, in writing it was there, what happened was that when the land reforms were implemented, the lands were went to the middle class because they were the tenants. The Dalits cannot become tenants also because they are untouchable. So they were in the peripheries of society. Also, so when these land reforms were made by the CPM, that those lands went to the hands of the intermediate caste and the Syrian Christian people. So they became uh, enriched and the Dalits were again driven to the peripheries of society. This is mainly arising from the, uh, the what is called the distorted version, the distorted analysis of caste by, by uh, the so-called communists. Otherwise, this could have been avoided. Who are the real tillers? Who should be given land? All these questions were totally uh, uh, avoided. 
So the same situation is here also. So if we have to take up this question, we should see the caste question and the class question in the proper perspective. So it is from that perspective that CPIM and Rasta, we have in our party program, we have analyzed that this caste question and class question are in there, inseparable. Because today in India, the division of labor, wealth appropriation, ownership of the means of production, division of labor, political power, everything is connected with the caste. And so class and caste are not separate here. It is more close. It is integral. You cannot separate in India. So a class analysis means you have to take caste into consideration. Without this thing in Indian and in India, class analysis will be mechanical. It is a mechanical way of thing that led to this kind of erroneous conclusions. Therefore, we understand that. We must see that if you have to take the Panjami line question in the proper perspective, it should be part of the long struggle. It should be part of the struggle for the uh, for the achievement of true democracy. So it should be part of the people's democratic revolution. So therefore, we must take up this question in the proper perspective. And the Panjami line question is one of the crucial issues connecting the Dalit question in Tamil Nadu. It is connected with the caste question. It is not a mere question of land. It is connected with the caste question and it is connected with the inseparable link between caste and class. So you have to take that in the whole perspective and taking up that question in that way we have to approach this question. So it should be a political question. It should be a total political, part of a total political program. In that way we have to take up this question. And uh, there are so many details. What has happened? So after the British has went from here, the situation became more worse for the Dalits. For the scheduled caste and the scheduled tribes, we know that today even the caste reservation is also being taken away. Yeah. The constitution is being undermined. Caste reservation in the constitution is undermined through caste, upper caste oriented reservation now brought out in the name of economic reservation. So all these are taking place. So there is an all out neo fascist RSS offensive against the untouchable, the so called untouchable and the Dalit section who are still untouchable. So that is the situation. Therefore, we should take up that question in the proper perspective. And the land, this Panjami land question, the struggle for their rights, this is Dalit's land. And this land is owned by other sections. For example, many, many areas, much of this land was not only taken by individuals, bureaucrats, politicians, but by the state also in the name of special economic zones, in order to build a special economic zones in order to build industrial parks and in order to uh, build up corporate projects, this Panjami land is being used. So that is the situation now. And the Dalits are being, who are already there, all their documents are destroyed. No documents are there. Only forged documents are now with the uh, government and with the uh, revenue authorities. This is the situation. And now they are driven again to the peripheries of society or they are displaced and even compelled to migrate from remote cities as bonded laborers. And they are becoming part of the informal, uh, the informalization process, the unorganized sector working class who are like bonded laborers today. So this should be seen in the proper perspective and we should chalk out a plan as to it should be part of the caste integration movement. At the same time, it should be part of the land to the tiller question. Both are in the, the caste, it should be part of the struggle for abolition of caste and it should be part of the struggle for giving land to the real tillers of the soil. So both economics, both the economic question and the social question, all are integrally coming up in the case of the Panjabi land question. That is our position in this regard.